wonderful it is. Like in this Economist this month, uh, it says uh, falling fertility, how the population problem is solving itself. Fertility is falling astonishingly fast, and that's bringing big benefits. Page 15. And then I turn to page 15, and I can read all about it. So you see their propaganda everywhere. Oh, the U.N., just said a month ago in Copenhagen, Copenhagen, they said, we want a world tax on children and a tax on every can of tomato sauce you buy, everything with its energy ration to shut off human activity to save the planet, which is just as fraudulent as their man-made global warming with record cold temperatures gripping the planet right now. You read Eco Science by the White House Science Czar and the previous science advisor to George Bush Sr., Paul L. Ehrlich, the, the current John P. Holdren for Obama, the same crew. Literally hundreds and hundreds of books they've read, more than 50 the last few years since we made Endgame that Aaron's been obsessed with reading. We're putting that knowledge into the new film we're working on. All of this going on, books by Bernard Shaw, George Bernard Shaw, where he endlessly said, we'll set up a world dictatorship. Anyone with below a 90 IQ will be executed we need a painless gas, so it's humane. Killing you is humane. He says it's humane. Uh, he went and met with Hitler, Mussolini. He loved them. They were great. They were good. They were wonderful. And then after Hitler got exposed, that's why my, you know, my dad, the botany professor at UT, was like, I'm Jewish, and Hitler only wanted to kill certain groups. The truth is we have to reduce world population of all the bad people. Eugenics is good. See, and, and, and that's what I was taught in college. It was just, oh, you're here for a uh, history class. There's too many people. Whites are bad. And be a white professor. And I was like, what is this? World government's good? Then I'd go turn CNN on it and say, the Southern Poverty Law Center says there's dangerous people saying there's a world government. And I went in college, 20 years old, 19 years old, I went, Wait a minute. They're telling me my guns are bad. White people are bad. World government's good. We need to reduce world population. But I turned CNN on or I turned C-SPAN on. They're having congressional hearings about dangerous crazies that believe the government's doing this. So, see, they propagandize but then demonize so that mainline Americans never get involved. It's a, it's a thing of not making it kosher or palatable to talk about this. Now, I just happened to cross uh, a video clip on YouTube last night. And I had already seen it here in the office in our research from the Soviet story, which is a powerful film. It won the Boston Film Festival, the Black Knights Film Festival, the Baltic Film Festival, the Sedona Film Festival. Uh, pretty big film. And it's the Soviet story, and it completely exposes how the Soviets and the Nazis were the same, worked for the same people, all run by leftist eugenicists who worshipped Hitler. I mean, I have to see Margaret Sanger all the time in Newsweek and Time as a Wonderful Woman. She was Time Magazine of the Year. She was the 100 most important women in the last century in 2000. And they never tell you, she said, blacks are subhuman weeds that must be killed. We'll use the Rockefeller Foundation to hire black leaders to do it. WDB Du Bois, all of them, or EB Du Bois, all of them. And it just goes on and on and on. We got three clips. Some of it's really bad audio. Uh, because it was filmed, you know, 80 years ago or more, with him worshiping Mussolini, uh, the worshiping of Hitler, the quotes that we've got out of his book about nerve gassing you. Now, this, when you read the Wikipedia about him, this is the great liberal. Uh, he was, uh, he's worshiped as one of the greatest liberals ever. Just two weeks ago, we had the video clip of MSNBC of, uh, one of the supporters of George Bernard Shaw, who promotes FEMA camps and mass arrest and Soviet re-education, and he's called the communist communist. And he saw Alinsky, who pledged his book to Lucifer, the, the original radical. He was a big supporter of Shaw. And here is Chris Matthews saying this is his idol. But then Chris Matthews, if he was sitting here before me... <laughs> I guarantee you would laugh at me if I talked about communism. But see, he really knows. It's a joke. He, it's like I'm a child. He goes, that's off limits. That doesn't exist. Yes, I praise communist leaders, but it doesn't exist. Yes, there's a world government, but you are so stupid, you're not even allowed to resist it. So 
Uh, we've got a lot of his quotes, got some video clips coming up, Aaron. But from your research of these people, what is the guiding principle of the left and right? What is their real secret re uh, religion? Not even really secret. They all publish it. but think we're so dumb we don't read it. And, and who is George Bernard Shaw? George Bernard Shaw believes in eugenics as a religion. There's a quote with those words, just as Francis Galton said the same thing. And the shocking thing for me that I didn't know before I started working here was that all the stuff the Nazis do, did was from, you know, England and the United States through all these eugenicists before that. And it just fits right in with the whole socialism and collectivism thing. They want to control everything from birth to everything you're allowed to eat and have. They want to control all of society. This is a religion of chicken-necked pervert control freaks. But They're always perverts. They're always control freaks. And all they talk about is killing people. But Bernard Shaw personally, when he was growing up, identified with Mephistopheles from Faust, which is the devil character. He believed he looked like him, and he praised Nietzsche. He was obsessed with Nietzsche's Superman costume. And he liked Lenin, and Lenin thought he was the devil and tried to do his beard like the devil. Yeah, so it's... I mean, they're devils. They're psychopaths that get your government and kill you. And they believe in every form and fashion that they're the elite class... And that the rest of us are expendable and should be eliminated. Super but really, we're just not psychopath control freaks craving power like them. Oh, yeah. They want the power. <laughs> I mean, these people are terrible. It's but see, that's the point I made in an earlier hour is that if you look at the Aztecs, if you look at the Mayans, if you look at the Germanic and Druidic tribes of Europe, if you look at the Romans, if you look at the Greeks, that's not popularly taught, but many Greek tribes had human sacrifice. Uh, if you look at the Babylonians, the Egyptians... Every culture, the ancient uh, Chinese, they all had human sacrifice, and the priest class would demand the best-looking maiden. A lot of times they would demand the prince or even the king, uh, They would, and they would use a drought or a crisis to say, see, give me more power. In fact, we see the worst periods in all these different societies going back over 8,000 years when there's bad droughts or floods because the priest class can then scare everybody and say, the, the volcano god is mad. Look at the Polynesians. Look at the Hawaiians throwing one of the daughters of the king into Pele. It, again, it's a primitive 1% of the population conservatively. Sociologists and psychologists have studied it. On average, 1% are psychopaths. And they don't just not have feelings. They're sadistic psychopaths. They enjoy pain. And through thousands of years, they are always going to end up getting in control. You may have some good governments, but they're rare. And once they get into control, they go hog wild mad. And they, again, they always demand children. They like to torture innocent children. That's the funnest thing. And they got to give them to Quetzalcoatl. They've got to give them to Chokmul. Uh, they've got to give them, uh, to Samhain. Uh, they've got to give them, uh, to, uh, Morduk. They've got to give it to Astaroth. They've got to give it to Beelzebub. They've got to give it to Horus. They've got to give it to Moloch. They've got to give, I mean, and, and, and again, I want to explain this. The reason these different, and the globalists divide and conquer, the reason they obsess and divide and conquer on always having a myth of only the Catholics are evil, or only the Jews are evil, and all evil flows, or only white man is evil, or only black men are evil, They're, you know, they've got the mark of Cain on them, and so they deserve to be slaves, uh, you know, 500 years ago with the start of the transatlantic slave trade into the Americas. Uh, it's always an excuse to dehumanize a group. And so then people can't recognize the evil of their own organization because it's only that outside group that's evil. The Jews, they say, are inherently the seed of the devil. The blacks are inherently the seed of the devil. The white man is inherently the, every group, the black groups, the royal Israelite groups, they believe all the whites and Jews are the devil. And then the other groups believe the blacks are the devil. And then, and of course, you've got psychopaths that are Jewish groups, psychop that are feeding on their own people, getting them to go under their control through the outside threat. We have the Zionist documents where they like their people to get persecuted. They have to. They finance groups to do it, to bomb Jewish. This is declassified by the, by the British and the Jews in, uh, in Israel that they would bomb uh, the ancient Jewish communities in Iran and the ancient communities in Syria, and the ancient communities in Spain, and the ancient communities in Iraq to make them go to Israel. They would pay Hitler to not let the Jews uh, leave anywhere but to Israel and then to pay the Zionist money to get out. There have been major university publications written by Jews about that. That's a microcosm. The obsession on, on Jews is that by only saying Jews or one other group, 
but that's a good example, are evil, then you can't recognize the inherent psychopaths in your own group. It allows the elites to divide and conquer, but it also allows the psycho groups over the Catholics, over the Jews, over the Protestants, over the military. It's all cults, brainwashing, marching, sleep deprivation, shaved heads, uh, identity, flags, colors, groups, gangs, cults. Everything is ancient mind control, and that's why they order you must body scan as an act of supplication, of submission. You must take your shoes off. You must answer questions. It's all about submission. And so, again, you have psychopaths of all these major groups. Instead of just saying, oh, the leadership of Germany or the leadership of China or the leadership of Israel or the leadership of Iran is evil. No, that group becomes evil. Then we never recognize the truth. It is a 1% psychopath guild that have developed systems of con artistry and manipulation to build a planet where they can carry out their operations.